The Life and Beliefs of Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger was born Margaret Louise Higgins on September 14, 1887 in Cornings, New York, to parents of Irish-American descent. Her father was a socialist and atheist who had a habit of arguing more about social issues in bars rather than taking care of their family. Her mother died at the age of 50 due to tuberculosis, which Margaret believed was caused by her having a weakened immune system due to having 11 children and 7 miscarriages. This event, combined with her father's liberal views, influenced her activism and social views throughout her life. After the death of her mother, Margaret enrolled in nursing school. Supported by her two older sisters, she attended Claverack College and the Hudson River Institute before enrolling in White Plains Hospital as a nurse probationer. During her work as a nurse, Sanger witnessed several women die due to complications with unsafe abortions. This motivated her to advocate for abortion rights. In 1902, Margaret married William Sanger, an architect and socialist. The Sangers moved to New York City in 1910 along with their three children and settled down in Greenwich Village. When they arrived, the Sangers became involved in radical activity, associating themselves with Emma Goldman, Eugene B. Debs, and Upton Sinclair. Sanger and her husband separated in 1914 and divorced in 1921. During their separation, Sanger embraced her sexuality and had affairs with people such as psychologist Havelock Ellis and writer H.G. Wells. Sadly, tragedy struck the Sangers in 1915, when their only daughter Peggy died due to pneumonia. In 1922, Sanger married James Noah H. Slee, an oil magnate who was one of the main funders of her birth control activism. Sanger's social activism began when she organized protests for the labor movement while a part of the Women's Committee of the New York Socialist Party and the International Workers of the World. Sanger helped to open the first birth control clinic in Brownsville, Brooklyn on October 16, 1916. After nine days of operation, the clinic was raided and staff, including Sanger, were sentenced to 30 days in jail. With this came a slew of wealthy supporters who helped to establish a federation for birth control. Although Sanger was not able to get her conviction overturned, she was able to influence the New York State Senate, which caused them to make it legal for doctors to run birth control clinics. This allowed Sanger to open another birth control clinic in 1923, which was staffed by female doctors and staff. Sanger started the American Birth Control League in 1921 in order to help start up birth control clinics across the country. Sanger served as president until 1928. The league worked to educate doctors and the public about safe and new forms of birth control. The league was also created to lobby the New York Senate to allow doctors to run and open birth control clinics. Through the creation, Sanger expanded the influence of the ABCL to create the Birth Control Review. This subdivision distributed pamphlets, books, and letters about contraception to the public. The ABCL would later go on to become the Planned Parenthood Federation of America, which has over 650 healthcare centers within the United States today. The National Committee on the Federal Legislation for Birth Control was officially created in 1932 in an effort to amend the federal legislation to the birth control laws so that contraceptive information could be distributed by mail. The NCFLBC's other goals were to educate the public about contraceptive methods and the need to amend the federal laws to secure the support of medical associations, religious institutions, social welfare groups, and other prominent organizations in the country. Sanger served as the president during the legal battles with the courts. With the Supreme Court case United States v. One Package, this victory was achieved. The American Birth Control League changed its name in 1942 to the Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Additionally, the organization began to expand its services and influence. In 1952, Sanger helped found the International Planned Parenthood Federation, serving as president for six years. Also in the 1950s, she convinced wealthy philanthropist Catherine Dexter McCormick to provide the financial support needed for the research to create an oral contraceptive. This research led to the birth control pill. Sanger saw the landmark Supreme Court case Griswold v. Connecticut, which made it legal for married women to obtain contraceptives without their permission, without their husband's permission. Sanger died on September 6, 1966, due to coronary problems in Tucson, Arizona. Now for Sanger's beliefs. Like many health professionals of the time period, Margaret Sanger believed in eugenics, or the science that deals with the improvement of hereditary qualities of a race or breed. She believed that birth control would provide a way to create a more fit human race that would be able to fight off diseases and prevent the prevalence of mental illness and congenital defects. Sanger even believed that the government should forcibly sterilize those who were deemed unfit to have children, such as the mentally ill. 
In recent years, Sanger has been criticized for her beliefs in eugenics and the placement of birth control clinics in impoverished and minority areas. She has been accused of being racist and attempting to exterminate the black race, all of which claims are unfounded and only arose due to the editing and clipping of Sanger's quotes on race. The reasoning for the placement of birth control clinics was that impoverished people typically could not support an abundant number of children and did not have the money necessary to go out and buy birth control from a normal doctor. Now for sexuality. Sanger believed that every woman should have control over her own destiny. She exercised this belief through her work in getting contraceptive information and services to women who could not afford them. She believed that in order for women to be equal, they had to have control of their sexuality. She gains food and clothing and shelter, at least without submitting to the charity of her companion. But the earning of her own living does not give her the development of her inner sex urge, far deeper and more powerful in its outworkings than any of these mere externals. In order to have that development, she must still meet and solve the problems of motherhood. Freedom of speech. Sanger vehemently challenged the Comstock laws, which prohibit the distribution of obscene and vulgar content by mail. Contraceptive information was classified under this umbrella, making it illegal for Sanger and her various organizations to distribute contraceptive information to the American public. Despite the laws against it, Sanger published her magazine, The Woman Rebel, in an effort to publish all known information about birth control to the public. Sanger was arrested for distributing this information and faced a prison sentence of up to 45 years causing her to flee the country in order to escape prison. Eventually, she was able to lobby the New York state government and the federal government to no longer include contraceptive information on the list of vulgar and obscene items not allowed through the mail. Sanger's Legacy Before the end of her life, Sanger was able to see the Comstock laws repealed in the Supreme Court case Griswold v. Connecticut in 1965 which left a lasting imprint on the availability of contraceptive information to women within the United States. Additionally, Sanger was instrumental in the creation of the birth control pill, which is one of the most effective forms of contraception today. Throughout her life, Sanger fought for equality of women through reproductive rights and family planning. Believing that women wanted their children to be free of poverty and disease, she wanted women to be able to do this through birth control. In this way, they could limit the number of children and improve their quality of life. These ideas have continued to live on through the Planned Parenthood Federation of America and the International Planned Parenthood Federation, which provide contraceptive and family planning information and services to impoverished women in the United States and abroad. Today, Planned Parenthood has 650 clinics open within the United States and several hundred more in other countries which provide low-cost birth control products and gynecological services to women in need. Sanger left a lasting imprint on the women's reproductive rights movement through her various organizations and the legislation passed which allowed for women to get easy access to family planning information and services.